Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are trainers. Welcome to today's video. Just a very quick one. We're going to do 10 quick tips for beginners in Pokemon Sleep. So if you've not yet played Pokemon Sleep or you've only just started playing it, this is the video for you. So without further ado, let's get stuck into it. Now you're going to need loads of candies to evolve your Pokemon. And a great way of getting more is by having loads of friends. Adding friends allows you to see how their sleep sessions have done and this gives you a candy for the Pokemon that they showcase and you can add up to 50 friends. There's really no downside for doing it so add as many people as you possibly can. You just need to go to the main menu and then the research community button. There you will see all your friends recent sleep data. You can click on them to read a little bit more about it if you wish. But click the plus icon in the top right and then type in their friend code and you're Good to go. Pokey Biscuits. Pokey Biscuits are effectively how you befriend Pokemon on sleep and they have four types so far that we know of. The bonus biscuit you get every single day and it will fill three bars of the chubby scale for what I call it. Uh, you can't keep more than one so you might as well use it when you've got it. The Pokey Biscuit is a very basic biscuit that does one bar of the chubby scale and the Great Biscuit will do three bars of the chubby scale like the bonus one does. And finally, you have the Master Biscuit, which will fill the bar in one go. It's practically a Master Ball, so it, it makes sense. They can be purchased from the shop or given as rewards for doing challenges. But if a Pokemon is hungry, each Biscuit will typically do double the points on the Chubby Scale. So these are the Pokemon that you want to be targeting first with these Biscuits. Now this is where things can get slightly more complicated. Each Pokemon has a speciality, a skill that they excel at effectively. Think of it like an ability in Pokemon. If you want to concentrate on cooking, then a Pokemon with the ingredient finding speciality uh, would be best suited. It'll say up in the top uh, right, I do believe, or where the po when you look on the Pokemon screen. If you want to feed Snorlax berries, then using a berry finding specialist Pokemon would be best. Now, it depends which approach you want to go for, but it, it's very important that you use Pokemon who collect Snorlax's favourite berries anyway, because they grant more points and it will level up Snorlax quicker. So when you discover Snorlax, it'll tell you their three favourite berries. You want to put Pokemon on your helper team that have those berries that they collect. Now, if you're like me and you only manage to get on the app in the morning and in the evening, then you would be better off using a berry specialist Pokemon and just trying to feed Snorlax as many berries as you can. Use the Pokemon that collects Snorlax's favourite berries because Pokemon that reach their carry, their carry capacity Try saying that five times quick When you're offline they will feed all the spare berries to Snorlax directly So you'll come onto the app and you'll see that 10,000 strength has been given to Snorlax Because all the spare berries have been fed to Snorlax Now one thing that is actually quite easy to end up missing as you start playing Pokemon Sleep Is as you find new ingredients, berries and meals you fill out a little notebook, a little notepad, there's a little option for it in the main menu. Um, and it's always worth checking this out because as you, you get about 10 to 20 diamonds for each new item you discover here. And these can really add up and you can get some really good premium stuff from the shop from just filling out the notepad really. So get lucky. It wouldn't be Pokemon without shiny Pokemon. The odds of finding a shiny in this game are very similar to Pokemon Go with about 1 in 450 from what people are reporting. Now you don't need to worry about failing a shiny as they are always hungry and you always get what's called a mega hit when feeding them um, which basically just fills up the entire bar with one biscuit. So even with a pokey biscuit, a lowly little pokey biscuit, you'll be able to befriend them straight away or fill the bar up. Now a higher sleep score gives you a higher chance of finding a shiny Pokemon, not because it ups the odds, but purely just because there'll be more Pokemon once you get to that Snorlax screen. There'll be more Pokemon around Snorlax. And you can improve that even more by having a higher Drowsy Power. The Drowsy Power is basically your sleep score times by your Snorlax strength. So level up your Snorlax as quick as you can, get that sleep score really high, and you should be able to find loads of Pokemon spawning around Snorlax. The more, the better. The higher chance of finding a Shiny. Now Premium Pass also gives you an extra Pokemon sleeping with Snorlax. So that gives you a little boost of finding some more Pokemon as well. Alrighty, so you're going to come to this video and you're going to be like, what Pokemon should I be using? So on screen is a picture of the best tiered Pokemon and the, be the best beginner Pokemon from Game 8 and their website. And there are multiple reasons why they've put the Pokemon where they've put them. 
Some of them have skills that mean that they give energy to the whole team and not just themselves. Others gather favorite berries very quickly. Others just use their skills very quickly and very often. Now for a beginner team, you encounter Pikachu, Caterpie and the Kanto starters very early on, probably within your first week of playing. And you want to be using these Pokemon as much as you can because they will shoot you up through Snorlax's levels. You want to level up the Mons in the A and the S tier as much as possible, which is why collecting candies is very important to do so. So go back to, I think, tip 9 and make sure you're adding as many friends as you possibly can because you're going to want to collect all the candies that you can if you want to be aiming to level up people such as Pupitar into Titar, which is a very good Mon to use. Now Raichu and Gengar are some of the fastest Mons in the game, meaning that their skills will trigger multiple times a day. These are the Mons that you really want on your team. Having especially a skill that levels up Snorlax with direct energy um, is a really good one to have. So if you've got a Raichu or a Pikachu and if you've got a Ghastly, you want to be leveling that up as fast as you can. If you want to evolve a Pokemon, you'll need to see what your Pokemon specifically needs to evolve. You can do this by clicking on the Pokemon in the Pokedex or Pokebox as it's named in Pokemon Sleep um, and then clicking the evolve button. This will outline what it needs to evolve. It'll typically need to hit a certain level and then you'll either need 150 hours with that Pokemon being your partner Pokemon, an evolution item or a set amount of candies or all three of those or two of those just have a look at the menu and it'll tell you what it needs. Candies are the hardest to get as some Pokemon such as Eevee require quite a lot. I think Eevee requires 80 candy per evolution. It's a pain in the butt. But adding friends is a great idea because obviously you collect uh, candies every time that you look at the research community. But also using the rare candies that you get through the rewards to target specific Pokemon Pokemon candy that you want is really useful. That's how I've managed to get all of my evolutions already. All right, so with like most games, Pokemon has Pokemon Sleep has a premium pass. It gives trainers who purchase it a lot of things. It allows you to track missed sleep sessions that will give Snorlax power, but it won't trigger any Pokemon encounters. And it also gives you access to the premium exchange store. I had to be careful when I was saying that. It's a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> Um, which has better prices in it, it's got great Poké Biscuits in it, I should have it clipped on the side, one of the sides, what you can buy in that store. It also offers a good camp set for free once a month, which is really great for being able to get more ingredients into your pot, as well as leveling up quicker. Um, you also get a guaranteed hungry Pokémon, and an extra encounter with every sleep session for a week, which is awesome if you're trying to hunt a shiny. And you'll also get a better return from biscuits, extra sleep points, and finally, maintaining the subscription gives you extra rewards every three months. So all of that is fantastic if you want to maximize your play on Pokemon Sleep, but it is definitely not a must. You can actually get two weeks for free when you try to buy the pass for the first time, and it's a great way to get some great things from the shop, as well as really boost your Snorlax levels. I recommend doing this for the events like the recent Eevee event, if you're especially wanting to shiny hunt during that event. But please, 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 just remember to cancel it if you're not interested in having it after that two week trial ends. All right, so not a long video for this one because I fucked up and I didn't record upgrading my cooking pot, so apologies for that. But <laughs> when you start Pokemon Sleep, your cooking pot can only hold 15 ingredients. And a lot of the good meals in Pokemon Sleep require more than 15 ingredient, ingredients. <laughs> so you need to go about upgrading your cooking pot as soon as you can. Now once you've seen 35 sleeping styles, you can increase your cooking pot. Uh, click on the pot and use your dream shards to increase it by 5. Or is it 3? Three? 3 or 5. As you find more sleeping styles, you'll be able to upgrade your pot frequently until you hit that 55-45 ingredient limit. Boy, this one is not going well. Some Pokemon can temporarily increase your pot and you also get a double pot on Sunday, meaning you can get a max of 90 ingredients into the pot on Sundays. Good luck finding all those ingredients though. And for the final top tip, we have the good camp set. Now this is a great feature in the game and it offers a lot of benefits for only 500 diamonds. I say 500, it is diamonds. But it is a reward that even free to play trainers can get so it doesn't matter if you're a free to play or if you're a premium player you can get this set quite easily 
Now the set will give you an extra Pokemon per sleep research that will also be extra hungry. Your cooking pot will hold 50% more ingredients, it'll be 50% larger. And your helpers will work 20% faster, suspicious. And be able to carry 20% more berries and ingredients. So all of this, all these benefits for 500 diamonds is a banging bargain. You get all of this for a week, those benefits, and you can purchase this set from the general store.